Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the 22-23 season. Yes, technically Austria and some other leagues have already started. But this weekend the big leagues kick off sooner than ever before. And so I thought it's time for a preview. Now uh, for the Austrian league since it was so isolated and started three weeks ago. I did a dedicated preview video for that league alone. Now I'm going to only do a preview video for the five leagues that start this weekend. And then next week you will get a similar one for the last two, which is La Liga and Serie A that take a little bit later. Maybe put push in some other competitions before that, like a cup round or so on. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to look go league by league. Uh, we'll look at what my model says will be the expected fi uh, file settings, so you get the predictions. Uh, we we'll look at chances of becoming champions, making it to the champ Champions League and being relegated. Those are the three questions that, that will answer for each league. And then, of course, I'll show you the first round of fixtures. And we'll start, background gives it away, in the Premier League, where here is the prediction. I thought we'll start Premier League first because, you know, you all... Most people are waiting for the, for, 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 for the Premier League, but then we'll go geographically west to east. And before we go into all uh, the standings here, a little bit of um, bookkeeping is in order. Now, you see the first column after the name is, of course, uh, the relative strength of these teams, which is compiled from three sources. I take first the club ILO rating, I take the SBI rating from 538, and I take also the aggregated bookmakers also an average over multiple bookmakers to kind of determine uh, the what is the objective strength of these teams at this very moment. Of course, these are very heavily influenced of what happened in the past season most of the time, although SPI and bookmakers kind of take also into account what are the prospects of the teams in there. But given those strength ratings, there should be no surprise of how the standings work out. Then... Uh, the next three columns, I run with these ratings, I simulate the Premier League 10,000 times and I keep track of these. And then I kind of count uh, uh, the points. And we see that the first column gives you the 5%. This means in 5% or of these simulations, let's take the first um, row with Manchester City. Manchester City achieved 74 points or less. In 50% of simulations, they uh, achieved 85% or less. And in 95%, they uh, achieved 96 points or less. On average, they achieved 85 points. And then to the right, this green shaded area is basically, uh, these are uh, the proportions of the um, positions they can have with the first position being on the very left, um, uh, which is, of course, Manchester City is also favorites to win the title. So this is rather green. And then you go towards the right um, and you see that, um, if, especially if you go all down, it gets a little bit uh, greener there, meaning that you will get more relegated. Um, the lines are, the first line is the separation between Champions League spot and Europa League spots. The second line, Europa League and Conference League spots. Then is the midfield kind of that goes nowhere. And the last line is relegation and further. And with that, we see, of course, that Manchester City and Liverpool will have the title race between them. Then there is, of course, who will round out the Champions League spots. Again, not surprisingly, at this moment, it should be Chelsea and Spurs. Yes, there's a lot of um, talk about how Chelsea might tail off uh, because Tuchel is not happy and the preseason hasn't been on. There are no news. The signings are not, not, not well. But, you know, it's early in the season. It's usually overreaction. Um, the ratings will adjust over the season if it really should turn out that Chelsea will not be good. But this is uh, at, at the most end. Chelsea and Spurs relatively close together. At the beginning of last season, Chelsea was more or less up there with the other two. So there is already a definite dent in the rating. But Arsenal and United are also in this conversation for sure. If you see at the range of the points, uh, there is quite some overlap there that you could see in Arsenal and Manchester United uh, just jumping into the top four. Then West Ham is best of the rest, but you also see there's a really, really broad midfield that arguably up until Leeds United, anyone could make it in the conference league there. It is that broad. It's just West Ham, Newcastle, Leicester, Brighton and Aston Villa are a step above the others. Um, and I, I would say at Aston Villa, I would also make kind of the cut 
of the teams that are in relegation trouble, although who is really in relegation trouble? That's Southampton, Fulham, Nottingham Forest and Bournemouth, so the three promoted sides, which, um, yeah, it is not inconceivable that uh, the three promoted sides um, will go down again, although I think one of them will make it. I always feel that one of them will make it. Um, and who personally, I hear that Wolves look to be in trouble, Southampton always looked to be in trouble to be honest i'm not sure if brentford can do it and we, you know we have to see everton and leeds <sighs> let's see where it will go from there so yeah interesting stuff um as for uh the chances i mean these are these are the previous standings but we have chances uh 58 champions manchester city uh 36 liverpool at the moment both of them uh dead on on the chat on the champions league and then it's basically a four-way race for the final two champions league spots um as for relegation i mean um uh, as high up as wolves uh crystal palace could already be get into relegation trouble however as i said it's southampton fulham bournemouth uh, and Nottingham Forest, who are really in trouble. The Premier League starts uh, again with Arsenal, uh, this time not playing a Brentford, but a Crystal Palace. Interesting game. Arsenal have been impressive in the preseason, so that will be interesting. Liverpool also travel to London to play against Fulham. I wonder if this isn't because of tourism that you get Fulham against Liverpool there. Um, just a side thought. And I think uh, the first big one that kind of leaps out is Everton against Chelsea. Not because of the quality, because both teams are in serious trouble because Frank Lampard playing against Chelsea. Um, and I think West Ham against Manchester City is, again, a rather, rather tough matchup for the defending champions because West Ham have been giving them some trouble there. So also, again, in London, tourists, maybe. I think this could be a factor there. I would say we'll move over to the next league, Portugal. And as in England, uh, I think the top four in the top five are not really much of a surprise. We see here the expected final standings. It is Porto just a tad ahead of uh, Sporting and then Benfica rather even. Now, as I'm shooting this video, and it may have changed by the time this is posting, uh, although I, <laughs> I intend to do it on the same day, um, Sporting could get a huge boost uh, with a certain former player returning there, but I, I don't want to get ahead of anything there. Um, I think it's rather accurate, these uh, standings. Now, what is always very interesting to me in Portugal is we have the top three who are really, really good, but we also saw some depth in the Portuguese league uh, last season around in Europe with Benfica and Braga making a deeper run. Braga sitting right in the middle of nowhere, uh, destined for the Europa League. Uh, and then for the other places, it is a big scramble, to be honest. I mean, it is a very, very dense league, even for relegation. Uh, you see from um, five teams, are really in uh, relegation trouble or at least seen early in this season and then this broad midfield but uh, from what I can tell in Portugal it is always up down up down up down up down now looking at uh, the chances um, here we see that Porto is almost a 50% chance of making it uh, um, becoming champions then uh, Sporting and Mefica making up the rest there and as i said when we look at champions league it's the three teams that will make it into the um, you know two of them will go and the third one will make it in the qualification round uh at the moment this would be benfica and on the right side we see for relegation it's really from gilles Vicente on who finished fifth last season i mean it's basically all the rest of the league have a chance of getting relegated the uh, Liga Portugal is that crazy and to me that's almost the more interesting part uh, although it's very intriguing to see up top but usually one of the teams separates um, kind of in December. Now the league starts actually with Benfica because of uh, European commitments a uh, home game on Friday against Aruca. Um, I gotta say uh, the, it's the biggest uh, fixture and I actually I don't know how it works with my scheduling and, and so on but Braga against Sporting that sounds like a fun fixture to kick it off the last thing I want to say about uh, Liga Portugal is that yeah uh, come next year I definitely need to fill up because there are more Spanish, Spanish jerseys than Portuguese jerseys behind me because I only have the three big teams so that is not good. It's also the league that unfortunately I'm getting to watch the least and that's something um, yeah, 
I have been discussing whether I should cover or not, but I think because the title races are so so interesting and because the teams have been doing well in Europe, I decided to uh, go for another season with Liga Portugal. Moving over to France, we see the big comeback of OL, Olympique Lyonnais, of course, PSG are overwhelming favorites. You basically see that uh, there's, uh, they are more or less already champions, but you know, we had that two seasons ago as well. And then um, Lille came in. The French league, as always, is one of the tighter ones, especially behind PSG. And if PSG has a weak season, and it may or may not be, they're under new uh, uh, management now, maybe uh, they will make things a little bit better. I don't know how much the World Cup will have a play uh, in uh, or a say in the whole thing. So, uh, loads to be seen, but I think um, it's not a foregone conclusion that PSG will win, but uh, all the signs are to, um, going for it. However, it's Lyon that uh, all the eyes are on because they had an atrocious eighth place finish last season that they, as nominated the second best team in France, should definitely. Um, build upon monaco again third place uh and then uh, and then it's om uh start ren lille should make a comeback you see the french league if you look at the arrows to, to the left they are the most changes from the promoted teams uh and you also see how faint the green is so uh it could literally catch anyone to get relegated from uh, i would i would argue uh spot 11 uh onward uh, what I find very in, in, in interesting that um, the, of the promoted teams, um, it is currently um, prognosed by the ratings that Toulouse and Auxerre will make it with Ajax, so having a little bit of a harder time. Lorient on the fringe, uh, maybe they are Clermont Foot uh, uh, rank outsiders there. So lots of interesting stuff happening in France as well. If we look at the chances, PSG 92% for the title. Yeah, that's kind of expected with Lyon having an uh, outsider chance. For the Champions League spots, it's a little bit um, more open. But, you know, OM, Monaco and Rennes together with Lyon uh, will be fighting for those Champions League spots. And then uh, for relegation, yeah, Brest, Reims, Montpellier, you, you take your pick, but it is uh, Lorient, Clermont and Ajaccio so that have the highest chances together with Auxerre. The season also starts on Friday with uh, Lyon hosting a uh, promoted side uh, Jaxo, which I think is interesting. We have a pretty big uh, game on Saturday between Strasbourg and Monaco. Uh, those were two teams that uh, finished high up uh, last season. Uh, PSG starts at Clermont, should be an easy one. I'm just looking at other big, yeah, I mean, uh, Marseille against Stadrans is more or less a traditional duel. But I think nothing that is that it's 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 rather an easy start uh, at this time around. I think it's then in the next round where again uh, Mon Monaco will play Ren and a rather rather dicey match up. Moving on to the Eredivisie, um, we actually might be in the midst of a change potentially because there was a whole lot of upheaval at Ajax. Um, we also saw that already in the Dutch Super Cup, Johan Kreifschal, uh, that PSV beat Ajax uh, there. So it kind of could be an early sign. On the other side, PSV needed to be ready for their European commitments against Monaco of all teams, uh, whereas Ajax still has a little bit time to slide into the season. Still, I think while Ajax are at the moment the overwhelming favorites, they are still the richest team in the Netherlands. They have probably uh, still a very deep squad to make up for all the losses. Um, but there might be change afoot because PSV also, also under new management, uh, I think Ruud van Nistelrooy, uh, that might be interesting. For me, the wildcard is, of course, Feyenoord, although we can see that um, high watermark for Feyenoord is kind of the middle watermark for Ajax, so it needs to have an outstanding season from Feyenoord. But, you know, making it into the Europa Conference League final and showing definite improvement, we might see an upset there as well. Um, again, it seems to be pretty clear-cut. It's Ajax, PSV, Feyenoord, and then even a Z on number four. Four is relatively settled and then is the scramble for the remaining places. Uh, there's also a clear top seven with Utrecht, Twente and Vitesse rounding out the rest. And then it's basically uh, best of the rest is uh, Herrenveen, 
Uh, and what I also found in interest at this time also all the uh, relegated teams uh, uh, promoted teams are also in again for relegation however I could very well see one of the other teams uh, fall down again because last season we said something very similar and then all three um, promoted teams stayed in looking at the chances uh, as I said it is at this very moment still very much Ajaxis however I could very well see. I think this is a much, much tighter league than everyone would expect. When we look at the um, relegation, we see a whole lot of teams implicated there. First round in the Eredivisie uh, starts almost slow, but we have Vitesse against Feyenoord. And Feyenoord does have uh, a relatively rough um, opening uh, program uh, with playing against Heron Vein as well. But, you know, uh, nothing really too concerning overall. But um, I would say Ajax, a relatively easy start at Sittard, PSV against newly promoted side at home and against Emmen. Uh, that should set up things very, very nicely. So we have only one league left, which is, of course, Germany, where, like in France, we have a very, very clear favorite in Bayern, who are more or less already the uh, winners right there. Uh, we also... The top four are also pretty clear cut at this moment uh, with Dortmund, Leipzig and Leverkusen, which kind of makes sense because I think those th those three are definitely the next step, but they are not quite Bayern yet. Yes, uh, if we, I would have, would have made these predictions, um, let's say a month or two months ago, um, I would have probably even said that uh, Dortmund will have a shot but not this time around because Bayern's business has been really, really good over the summer break. And even though Dortmund on paper looks rather improved, the Sebastian Alea uh, issue and uh, over, overall the quality of squad, I think it's not enough to challenge Bayern. It will be in the 11th time in a row we'll have Bayern as a champion. It becomes a little bit boring. However, I have to say that the Bundesliga still is a very, very intriguing and good league. Yes, we have the top, uh, we have the next three. And then we have actually a pretty broad selection of teams, I would say from Frankfurt to roughly Freiburg, probably Hoffenheim. That definitely could also make a challenge for a top four spot. I think for Köln it's probably an edge too far. Like in France, we also see a whole lot of changes. We had teams that were underperforming last season. I'm looking at you, Gladbach. I'm looking at you, Frankfurt. Yes. We Frankfurt under, under, underperformed. We all remember that they won the Europa League, which was this big positive swing for Ger for Germany. We have five German teams in the Champions League after all. However, in the end, Frankfurt actually disappointed and finished only 11th. So, and we would expect Frankfurt to uh, finish much higher. Um, what's also exciting is that we have two uh, giants back uh, with Werder and Schalke, however, they will definitely fight against rele relegation. Another big question for me is how will Hertha fare? Um, at the moment, it's Augsburg and Bochum, uh, who nominally really look to be the teams that are most likely to go down because you, um, if I look at the selection of teams and let's take all the teams pumped by companies out, it seems that Augsburg and Bochum are the smallest teams left in the league, but it's a pretty good Bundesliga uh, this time around. And Augsburg is a team that has been steadily staying in there. Yes, relegation trouble over the last few seasons, but then never on the last day of the season. So I would not necessarily uh, count for it. And we see it's really, really tight between Bremen, Schalke and Augsburg. Bochum is a natural choice, I would say, but it doesn't mean anything. Literally doesn't mean anything at this point around. So yeah, um, when we look now further at the chances, of course, Bayern Munich, SPSG, really, really up top. And as I said, the top four are clear. And then uh, it's more or less the relegation trouble and maybe uh, the relegation fight struggle, I should say, uh, where Stuttgart and Hertha, two big teams, also could get implicated there. Uh, the first round of the Bundesliga campaign, I got to say, this must be the best the absolute best first round that I've ever seen in any league anywhere. We start out with Eintracht Frankfurt against Bayern, Munich, against Bayern Munich. So the champions against the Europa League winners in Frankfurt. That's already a pretty, pretty big affair. But it doesn't stop there. We have a Berlin Derby between Union and Hertha that even flies in the Saturday afternoon window. That's a pretty big game to start to, to start off. We have 
second against third from the last season, Dortmund against Leverkusen, the big game on Saturday evening. And then to uh, tip it off, we also have Köln against Schalke. Yes, this is maybe not the, um, in, from the current standing a big game. But given the status of those teams and given that they are relatively close, that is a proper uh, rivalry there, there, there as well. A real, there are four top games, and I'm not even talking about Klappach against Hoffenheim, which is probably a sleeper game right there. It's an absolute humongous start for the Bundesliga, one that is really, really exciting uh, to see. And uh, to be honest, it will not get much weaker in the second uh, week as well. So yeah, those are my, this is my season preview for the five leagues that will start uh, this weekend. Let me know where you agree or disagree with the ratings that I have. I would like to know what you think uh, is happening in certain leagues. Uh, are you excited? Which leagues are you excited, excited about? And uh, which upsets do you see coming? In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever happens something in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.